Hello fellow Unreal Engine artists, designers and developers and welcome to this second episode of the series on developing an automatic landscape material. In the last episode I showed you how to set up your basic first layer with tiling and in today's episode I'm going to show you how to blend between the tiling in the foreground and the tiling in the background for a more realistic effect. So let's get straight into it. This is where we got to in the last episode, a simple single layer texture with tiling controls. And if you look at the landscape here, we had a tiling size control, but the issue was that if we do a large tiling size, it's good for the distant uh, parts of the landscape. If we have a small tiling size, it's great for when you're close up, but not so good for the distance. So in today's episode, we're gonna look at how to blend those two tiling sizes so that you see the cl close tiling in the foreground and the more spaced out tiling in the background. Now, make sure that you've done the previous episode. I've got the playlist linked in the description below. So make sure you're up to this point and then you'll have this and we can continue on with the tutorial. So let's create a separate stream for um, tiling near the foreground and tiling in the background. So we'll take our UVs here where we set up our tiling size. And if we go into the tiling size here, let's rename this attribute to near tiling size. And then what we'll do is we'll duplicate it with control D And we'll call this at um, parameter far tiling size. And we'll set that to a default value of 40. So near tiling size is going to have a default value of 4, far tiling size 40. And again, in order to get our UVs from the landscape coordinates, we will duplicate our divide node, put in our landscape coordinates, and put in our far tiling size. And now we've got uh, near UVs and far UVs. And what we'll start to do here as well, just to tidy things up, is we're going to end up with lots of cables between different parts of the landscape. So what's nice is to use something called named reroute node just to keep things um, organized. So drag out from this first divide and type add and look for add named reroute declaration node. And we'll call this one near UV. And then same on the other divide, drag out, add named reroute node, and we'll call that far UV. And um, it's up to you. They, it assigns random colors to these. I like to have just one color for everything. So I'm going to uh, drag around both of them, go into the node color, and I'm going to choose this sort of um, purple value here. And in fact, if you drag it up to the top here, we can quickly select that for future nodes. Click on OK. And now all our re named reroute nodes will be purple. Now what we can do is we can detach these other nodes here going into the UVs. Use Alt and click here to detach them. We can tidy this up here. And now we can right click in here type near UV and that finds our named reroute node and we can put that in and similarly down here we can do near UV again and plug that in there okay so what we want to do is we want to set up a separate stream for the uh, far tiling so let's create a little bit of extra space here move the UVs section over a bit expand this landscape layer and what we'll do is we will move these four nodes here back a bit and in fact we'll take the normal one all of the ones connected to that and move that down a bit just so you leave enough space for another texture node there okay so let's start off with the um, base color texture select it and duplicate it 
And what we'll do is we're going to plug our far UV control into this. So right click, look for far UV and plug that in. Um, and we won't connect it to anything yet. This is just gives us the texture that's tiled for the foreground. This gives us the texture that's tiled for the background. Uh, similarly, here we will move these down a little bit. And again, we will duplicate our normal. So select it, Control D, and right click here and type Far UV. And plug that into the UVs here. So again, we have the normals for the foreground and the normals for the background. So how do we blend these together so that we see the foreground textures uh, nearer the camera and the further uh, textures away from the camera. We use a mask and let's go over underneath our UVs and right click and type camera depth and you'll see a node here called camera depth fade. Uh, this is a very powerful node which creates a mask where elements closer to the camera are masked off from elements further away from the camera. And we have some controls over where it starts and how it transitions into the background. So that's these two elements here, fade length and fade offset. So let's create some parameters for that. So let's steal the far tiling size parameter here. Control D to duplicate. And first of all, the fade length. So that's actually the transition from the foreground to the background. So let's give this a better name. Let's call this uh, blend distance transition. And let's give it a default value of zero for now and plug that into the fade length. Next, we'll duplicate this again and we will do the blend distance start. So that's where the um, foreground and background are cut off. And let's make that default value 2000. So that's 2000 centimeters and put that into the fade offset. And this last setting here for vertex shader, it um, is whether it's going to use all of the um, uh, pixels in the uh, scene to determine the camera depth or whether to just use the vertexes on the landscape which are fewer and further between. It's more efficient just to use the vertex shader uh, so it's defaulting to false so let's make that true. So to do that right click and do static bool, set it to true and plug that in. Let's just test this out and see what this looks like. So uh, just to see what this mask looks like let's um, drag out here, do make material attributes. And you see that it's plugged it into the base color. And then if I zoom out a bit, let's do the output from the make material attributes and plug it into our final output and do a save. Now, if we look at our landscape, it's all white at the moment. But if I go over to the blend distance and blend The blend distance start and blend distance transition over here I can change those so let's go a little bit down to lower to the landscape and you can see as I get low to the landscape there's a black line here so let's change the blend distance start to something like 10,000 and you can see that line moves further into the distance so that's the cutoff point so the mask is effectively black for the foreground and white for the background so let's move this back down to something like 4,000. And the transition, if you make it something like 10,000, you can see that there is a blurred line between where the blend starts and where it ends. So it's nice to create a sort of a fade out rather than a harsh line. So let's put that back to zero at the moment because you'll see what it looks like uh, with the harsh um, line between the blends. So now we've got this mask, how can we use it to blend between our foreground tiling and our background tiling? So let's come back here and plug the 
node from our layer back into the output. And now we can get rid of this make material attributes and we'll create a named reroute node for our mask. So click on add named reroute and we will call that distance blend mask. And let's give it the same color as the other ones here. And again, just for organization, let's drag around here and comment it and say depth fade mask. In fact, let's change that to depth fade mask. That's a easier name to remember. Okay, and drag that up here. And now we have our two uh, streams of tiling here. We want to use that mask to blend between them. And there's a very powerful node in the material editor called the LERP or linear interpolation node. So if you click L on your keyboard and left click, you will get this LERP node here. And it comprises two inputs and an alpha, which is the blend between them. So if we right click and use our depth fade mask, we can plug that into the alpha. And if you remember, it's black in the foreground and white in the background. So this mask blends from zero at the top input to one at, in the second input. So it is set up for near in the, in the first uh, input. So we'll plug our RGB into the input. And then in the background, it will be one and we'll plug in our tiling in the background and now the output from here we can plug into our color tint correction and we need to do the same thing for the normals as well so select these two do control d to duplicate drag it down here and again plug the near uv normal into the input a and the far uv normal into the input b and the output into the normal intensity uh, changes here and click on save and let's go back to our landscape and you can see here the cutoff so here is the near tiling that goes up to this point here and then there's a harsh cutoff and it goes to the far tiling so we're getting the effect we want we just have to blend the parameters a bit so let's go a bit closer to the ground and play around with those parameters. So let's change the start distance to something like 2000, okay, which looks good. And again, it's not looking too bad, but it's still quite a harsh transition there. So let's change the blend transition to 3000. And you can see that it smoothly changes from one to the other. And as we zoom out, you can see that as we get far away, we're just seeing the far tiling. And as we get closer to the ground, you can see we get the near tiling. So that's kind of what we want. And you can play around with those values here in order to um, change those parameters. Maybe we want the start distance or the blend distance start to be closer, something like that, 1000. But uh, you can play around with those. And now we have something that uh, blends quite nicely between the foreground and the background. Still got the um, repetition here, you know, the, the straightness, but we'll, we'll um, deal with that when we do the episode on tiling variation. Um, so that's pretty much everything we need to cover today. One thing we'll do again for organization is at the moment, our parameter groups in our material instance are all in these sort of random groupings of global scalar parameter values, global texture, global ve vector. So let's start creating our own groups here to organize uh, some of those attributes. So let's go to the landscape and let's choose our four parameters at the beginning of the material here. And let's start off with the near tiling size and give it a group name of uh, zero space uh, landscape G. 
general. And the reason that I've chosen uh, put zero at the front here is because I want these to be uh, sorted in a particular order. So I'll use zero for the landscape general and then I'll be using uh, one, two, three, four, five for the different layers. Um, and then you can also specify the sort priority as well. So I want the near tiling size to be the first parameter. Then if we pick the far tiling size, I've got this landscape general in my drop down. I'll make that the second parameter. The blend distance start, I will make the third parameter and the blend distance transition. I will make the fourth parameter. Save that and you will see over in our material instance we now have a landscape general um, group here with near tiling size, far tiling size, blend distance start and blend distance transition. And make sure that you have the near tiling size and the far tiling size set to separate values. As I said, I've been using 4 and 40 for mine um, and you'll see that that's uh, working reasonably well for the uh, blending at the moment. So I uh, hope you found today's tutorial useful. Uh, in the next episode, we'll start to create the four layer landscape for the ground level, mid, low level, mid, high level and cliffs or rock levels. So stay tuned for that one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.